Okay, guys, you can see here an epidermal inclusion cyst, a couple, maybe 1.5 centimeter. You can see that punctum there. It's kind of like a blackhead and it's got a little pocket underneath. So we're gonna numb this up, do a little drainage and then take that sack out for them. Just get two or three small stitches there. It should be a pretty small scar, but we'll get that whole bump out there for Hey guys, Greg Lindstrom, PA here, Mr. Pops it. We have a epidermal inclusion cyst here. You can see, got it all numbed up, the one we were just talking about. Um, we're just gonna get that little punctum right here. Kind of empty some of these contents for him, break it up a little. And then we're gonna get that sack out. And this one's been there a while, so it might be a little dry. We wanna get this out for him. That's good. And you can see some of the drier yellow contents at the top, and then when it gets deeper, it's just a little more juicy. And that's all keratin. And the good thing about kind of squeezing that out, no pain, you're okay? No. Good, good. Once we empty that sack, now I can make a much smaller elliptical cut here. And that sack has come down probably 60 to 80% in size. Does that work better for you? Yeah, it's good. So we can easily do a very small ellipse here. So, and we'll start teasing this sack out here. Sometimes the sacks will be surprisingly bigger than they felt originally, which sometimes we see. Once we get under that sack, we'll start teasing that out. And sometimes we get the scissors that are a little dull. <laughs> Gotta get these sharpened. Yeah, that tip's not that sharp. Oh, we can come back. We'll just put those aside for sharpening. And we'll go to usually a blade if the scissors aren't getting it done. Once we get under it, it just kind of starts peeling out here, which you'll see. And we'll do a little bit of a dab there. Even though it doesn't hurt when you pull the skin up like that, it feels strange <laughs> for the patient. It's a weird feeling. Not a real comfortable feeling. So I try not to pull too hard up there. And that's good. We just got some fat lobules there. And we can see that sack was pretty thin, completely emptied. So um, it's just deflated right there and kind of fibrous, you can see. So that's nice. I'm just going to go in and check. There was nothing left. We got everything out in the squeeze, which is good. So let's take a look. Now, sometimes right at the edge, like here, you'll see a little bit of cyst wall. And that's why I always come back, just to make sure. That we get everything from the edges so it doesn't reform. And on those sacks that are a little thinner, sometimes they'll do that. They'll just tear, um, kind of tear apart. So make sure to get that. That's part of the sack. 
Another reason why people say, why do you do an ellipse? Um, it's so I can visualize in here to make sure I got it all. So many people, so you can see cyst wall here too, that's under, up underneath there that would have been hard to see if I just made a small cut. And that's common. A lot of people come to see me actually, dab there. They said they had a cyst removed before and now it's back. And as long as you're visualizing everything, it shouldn't come back. It should be easy to remove on these ones that aren't inflamed and get the whole thing out. Just like we're gonna do here. Right. That's it. Last little bit of wall right there. It's kind of white, you can see. Good. That looks good. Just a couple fat lobules there. The thinner the wall, the more I explore usually because it can just kind of fall apart. That's just fibrotic kind of tissue there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, a couple little stitches and he'll just have a little one centimeter scar for a 1.5 centimeter cyst. So we'll, oh, it's right behind me now to put it on the wall, huh? <laughs> no pain? No. Okay, almost done, just putting in a couple stitches. This may smell a little bad, but it's just for a mm -hmm. second here. For a sec. So we see a little bit of a serrated edge there. Just a tiny bit on that original cut. I like a clean line, so we just cut that so it's nice and clean, comes to better together. Comes together better. So this is our deep sutures here. Grab in some fascia. We remove that punctum that he had there, that open pore, which if not removed, sometimes reforms. As you can hear, I'm a little sinusy, just getting over that cold that was non-COVID, which is good. <laughs> Feeling better today. Good. Got a little bit of puckered up tissue version there, which is what we like to see. Get some good tissue version here. Three little stitches and we'll be done. I haven't seen the esthetician in a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's nice to see her back. Mm Do a little tiny pressure bandage on there. Make sure any leakers stop leaking. That looks good. We'll go 12 to 14 days, get those stitches out. Just make sure we don't have any, any dog ears. Ten to twelve minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. cool. Not bad. 
I don't like to leave any dog ears, so if there's even a little bunch up here, I'll take that little edge of tissue out. Just like that, that flattens it out for him. That looks good. So it's just a little one and a half centimeter, maybe 1.2. And that's it. So thanks for popping by. That was just a small cyst that was bothering him. It was under a lot of pressure, actually. Sometimes the smaller ones don't look like much, but when they're really packed in, they can be, you know, cause discomfort, itching. You start messing with them, and that's what can pop them or get them even growing bigger and cause uh, more problems. So we like to get them when they start feeling that way um, and they start getting really packed in. It's time to take them out. So thanks for popping by.